everyone, Steve Elliott here again. Uh, this time I'm working back in Procreate 4. Uh, this is a, a case of needs must really, because um, if you follow me, you know that the last painting I did was in Art Rage. And I did sort of intend to do a few paintings in Art Rage. But unfortunately, uh, I wasn't at home last week. I, I was uh, away in Birmingham and I didn't have access to my PC with Art Rage on. I don't like using Art Rage on the iPad, and I think I might do a video about that actually, um, because I think I may have a workaround that would make it a bit more useful. Anyway, uh, basically, all I use on my iPad is Procreate and Paper in 53 for sketching. So I was in Birmingham. And I, I took my iPad with me, and that was all I've got access to. So uh, this week's painting is in Procreate, and it's another oil painting. I actually painted the bulk of this sitting on a children's ward um, in, uh, as I say, in Birmingham. So uh, the iPad really is so versatile. Uh, I don't want to say that I sort of sat there and ignored my grandson uh and and just sketched because that sounds a bit horrible and uh, it wasn't like that at all uh it wasn't like that um i was with my daughter and we had a great week uh, with my grandson and we played uh, lots of music on her iphone and we've got sort of percussion toys i bought a little frog uh carved out of wood uh, that you uh, with a spiky spine and you could run a stick over it and it would make sort of a gribbit sound which was quite percussive so I was doing sort of all sort of percussion sounds with him and and uh, keeping him entertained and and singing to him and um my daughter's into mandalas and and she spent some time doing mandalas so it was really at the downtime when he was asleep that we got to do the the uh, painting and the sketching so I wasn't being a bad granddad I promise I was um you know being I was there for him and my daughter when I needed to be but I still got time to do some painting so this is it um a while ago I took a, a couple of photos of um Loughborough train station this was at night and the girl sitting on the bench is uh, my actual daughter that's living in Birmingham right now uh, with a, a baby and she's been in hospital for five months uh, but my other daughter came back uh, from she'd been in Australia and she came back from Australia after a year away to uh, to be with us uh, which was great so we went to the train station to meet her and it was at night so I took a few photos of her and she got off the train and she's got, got like one of them Australians up with a with a corks on sort of affair. And she looked proper Australian and a boyfriend too. And I, I toyed with the idea of putting them in the painting, but I, I like the fact that the, the station was deserted and there was just one person sat on the bench. Uh, I thought it, it made for a moody painting, so I kept it at, at that in the end. You notice I totally ignored the colours once again in the photo. We've got some sort of red uh, vending machine there, which obviously would not work because it would be pretty much smack dab in the middle of the painting. Big bright red blob would just draw your eye straight to it. So um, I didn't use any reds or anything close to red i i used a sort of a teal color and purples and um browns and i i worked on those i'm starting to leave more of the ground color in on the paintings now than i've done previously um before i've tended to sort of almost obliterate that ground color i put on completely the last two paintings i've started to actually use that and incorporate it more into the painting i want i want to talk about brushes and, and things that i've got a few th thoughts 
I've been because I've been painting digitally now for six months, and I took this up to stretch myself really to um, try a new media or medium and um, experiment with it. And I've uh, up till now, I've pretty much. Um, kept to a very traditional style of painting and uh, apart from the first few if you see that uh, if you go back to my very early videos in procreate i did a couple which were much more graphic with some butterflies on and some bugs and stuff and they were more sort of graphic design type images and then i moved into the painting but i've stuck to a very traditional style and it's dawned on me that it might be holding me back somewhat because this painting has been painted with pretty much two brushes. That's the turpentine brush and the oil brush. Because they're oil painting brushes and I was doing an oil painting. And I thought, oh, what? why would I not use an acrylic brush or a gouache brush if they give me the effect I want? Because it doesn't matter, it's not really oil paint. But I was still in this mindset that I was using oil paint in a digital painting and I couldn't use an acrylic brush or a gouache brush because that was the wrong type of brush. So I thought, it doesn't have to work like that. It it's, can be, I can use any brush at all I, I, I like. So I then... I did start to mix it up, not just yet. The, the painting so far is still done solely with the turpentine brush. And I use that first to get on the big washes of colour, colour the big areas. And it's only when I start getting into the detail do I, I swap to the oil brush. But I find that the oil brush um, does leave a sort of a, a ragged edge which i don't always want sometimes you see there now in the detail it's really ragged and sometimes i'd like something a little bit smoother so i have i started to mess around using the gouache brush and the acrylic brush and um they did give me uh, some really nice effects so i'm thinking i've got to start thinking out the box and forget that i'm or put out my mind that I'm working in oil paint, or I'm trying to do an oil paint, I should be exploring uh, all sorts of things, the brushes more. I haven't used um, layer masking. I haven't really touched on that. That's probably because of the style of painting I'm doing. And I know there's lots of features in um, Procreate that I'm not using because... I don't particularly need to. So I, I think I am going to experiment much more with um, different brushes. And I'm still making more brushes. Uh, those of you that have, have seen my watercolour, digital watercolour paintings, you may have downloaded the uh, texture and brush pack uh, that I put on Gumroad. Well, I'm working on a complete set of watercolour brushes and I'm going to do a really simple painting that illustrates how to use all of the brushes because I am aware that there's lots of different techniques that I would use uh, in painting but with it using a particular brush and they're just not here in Procreate or uh, any other package that I've tried. So I am working on that. I'm looking forward to, to doing that. Uh, so I'm definitely ex experimenting much more with brushes and uh, getting a bit more adventurous in layers. Um, I, I am, I'm not new to uh, digital work because I, I did work as a sign maker and I was using Corel Draw. I don't know if anybody knows of that package, but that's sort of um, a vector imaging program and obviously Photoshop a little bit. So I'm sort of used to the layers things but I've never delved into actual painting with it before I started this channel. So I think I need to push myself much harder now. I think I've, I've nailed the basic concepts of the digital painting. Uh, I'm really enjoying it, but I don't want to stagnate. I don't want to just keep doing 
churning out the same thing over and over again. I want to uh, keep uh, develop, developing as an artist and um, maybe even move away from the, the paintings that might not even look as though they're done traditionally and may look as though they are uh, done digitally. I don't know, because I do still like that kind of organic feel. If I could do a sort of a, a blend between the organic and the features that you can use in the software, make more uh, use of those, that will be cool. Because that's why I took up the the digital thing I wanted to stretch myself so I think now I'm getting to the point where I need to push it to the next level so if you've got any advice or tips on where I should be going next that I'd really like to hear uh, your views and opinions on that um, that would be uh, great that uh, could be very very useful so I suppose I ought to talk about this painting a little bit. Now, I think at this point I've started to use, I have, this is, I'm using the acrylic brush here and you can see I can sort of sculpt and do, oh, it's more controlled, I wouldn't say it's detailed, but it's definitely a lot more controlled and I can put uh, brush marks on that haven't got those sort of ragged edges and make things just a little bit sharper in the foreground I'm not so fussed it way back in the distance but in the foreground um, I'm liking the fact that I can get some sort of sharper edges on the lines and I did try a brush uh, that I uh, created myself but it it was a monumental failure really because uh, for some reason it was just a massive brush and it was just too big and I couldn't get it small enough so I need to work on that. So I'm just sort of, I'm, I'm getting fairly close to the end of the painting, I suppose. I'm sort of putting in final bits of detail and I want to bring out that the sort of light. So you can see I've sort of done some ragged brush strokes off that light to give sort of rays of light coming down. And then I'm picking up the light on the brickwork. So I'll put a little bit of that, soft blue colour onto the bricks and then I use um, create a new layer and put a couple of red lines in just because I thought I was losing the perspective a little bit and I wanted to just um, sharpen up the perspective just to make sure I've got those benches running away to the uh, vanishing point properly then I, I uh, switched that layer off I just used um, an ink pen to do that, uh, create those lines. And then what I do, I create a new layer, an highlight layer, and I start putting highlights. And I am using a colour on this. I'm not using white, I'm using colour. But it, you see how it just sort of pops. I'm sort of switching back between dark and light here. It just sort of pops those colours if you uh, put, put it on a... A highlighted layer and I think I set the blend mode to um, dodge color dodge for this so that is it I hope you've enjoyed this video thanks for staying with me till the end and if you liked it a big thumbs up as always is much appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing because I've got lots more videos like this and I'd love to be sharing them with you. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.